Hey guys, it's Django here. Hope you're doing well. Um, I've been asked by some Reason users how I set up a reference track. And they were asking me to just share a screenshot, but I thought it'd be more useful just to do a quick video and demonstrate this. I find referencing to be really handy for getting my mixes up to a sort of releasable standard. Um, and also having some analysis tools after the master that the reference track goes through. So I can compare the metering on the reference track to my mix, basically. So I am going to create a track called reference. I'm going to make it gray so it sort of doesn't stand out. It's just going to live at the top of my project muted and I can drag a track onto here whenever I want to compare what I'm doing to an existing track. Now the next thing is to tab to the back of the rack I'm going to grab a combinator or the monitoring uh, metering plugins. I'm going to hold shift while dragging it in so it doesn't wire up. I'm actually going to move this up. Let's move it up to the top. Uh, and then I'm going to grab a spider. Audio splitter and merger. I'm going to hold shift so it doesn't wire itself up. And now I'm going to grab from this master section. Let's just open both up. Here are the hardware outputs. So at the moment, this track goes to the master. And then from the master, it goes to outputs one and two of Reason, which go into your sound card. So what I'd like to do is disconnect this. If you disconnect the left, left one, it does the right for you. And I'm going to send this master into my spider. Hey, there we go. Just to see only the thing that's selected. Hiding or dimming the cables that aren't relevant. Um, so what I'll do then is I will also run from the reference track direct out over here. We will run this into here as well. So now what's happening is instead of going to the master, this track is going straight to this spider. From the spider, we're going to go into the combinator, which will have all my metering plugins. And from the metering plugins, it'll go to my speakers. So now let's have a look. Let's first grab a reference track. I'm uh, just going to grab two tracks of mine. Let's stick one. All right, fine. Put them on new tracks. So let's stick one of them on my reference track. And one of them is just going to play. Let's turn the metronome off. So let's pretend this is the song I'm working on. Let's make it obvious by doing something silly on the master. Cool. So we can clearly hear that it's high passed. And if I solo the reference track, clearly not high passed. So it's definitely bypassing the master. But now we don't have any plugins in this combinator yet. So some plugins I recommend having for metering would be a Ulean loudness meter. It's a free LUFS meter. Um, LUFS is a standard that's used in broadcast. Uh, so by default, unless you buy the pro version of Ulean, uh, it expects your sort of average to be minus 23. So the meters might go a bit red when you're playing music because music tends to be a lot louder. Um, Spotify, I believe, normalizes to minus 14. Uh, but yeah, look up this sort of thing if you're mastering but even if you're just mixing it's useful just to sort of check that your mixes are all roughly the similar level it also shows you true, true peak so if I play now this is a 
master track. If you're mastering, you'll obviously see what the sort of trends are in your references. So other plugins that are useful to have in your metering chain include Span by Voxingo. I like to have it a little bigger than this. Let's just undo that high pass real quick. So a good mix usually looks somewhat flat in Span and white noise would actually look like it has less lows than highs, which uh, if there's no tilt, white noise would be flat across the frequency spectrum. So I quite like the slope that Span uses. I find it useful just to sort of look at a mix as if it were flat. And you'll often sort of see a dip around the sort of muddy range of sort of 300 hertz-ish. Span is another thing to check your mixes through. Uh, check masters through. Pretty handy to have. Uh, another plugin you might want is an oscilloscope. Uh, this particular one is tempo based. It's called Oculoscope. It's also free. Um, another option is Signalizer. Signalizer actually has a, a spectrum analyzer like Span as well as an oscilloscope as well as various other things, definitely check that out. It doesn't run on my uh, old graphics card, but for most people it should be fine. This guy is pretty sweet, it does go larger. And what I like about it is it's synced to quarter notes. So you can check your kick and bass relationships, check your phase of things. It actually even has a side chaining option. So you can send, uh, you can send like you could have it on your kick and then send it your bass and then see if your kick and bass are clashing with separate colors. So yeah, Oculoscope, definitely check that one out. Um, another free one is by is called Smexoscope. Um, similar thing. <laughs> So yeah, that's useful for checking your phase relationships between like your kick and bass, as well as just generally referencing what the waveform would look like on a finished piece of music. Uh, another thing you might want to do is check your mix in mono. I personally use this A1 stereo control. Uh, you could use, I think there's a rack uh, combinator. So if you go into factory sounds, uh, combinator patches, I believe under effect uh, uh, utilities. I feel like somewhere here there's a mono thing. Perhaps you could search for it. But basically, this lets me hear my mix in mono. And this is useful because smartphones are mono. Uh, a lot of the times, uh, some smart speakers are mono, uh, some club systems are even mono. So it is worth checking in my opinion to make sure nothing major has gone wrong, like a piano going missing. Pianos often have weird phasing things, these multi, uh, multi mic piano libraries. So yeah, useful stuff to check. Um, you can also check inside span. Uh, this correlation meter. Basically, if it's on the left, you've got mono compatibility, and if it goes below the center, that's when I would check what sounds are going out of phase. Uh, one way to make things go out of phase on purpose would be to flip the phase of one channel, so like your left channel. Uh, basically, that means like you're inverting the waveform. So then the when you mono them that inverted waveform is going to cancel out the other one um so yeah that's the easiest way to sort of explain a phase cancellation situation but it can also happen with multiple mics recording the same signal and then the waveforms get to the mics at slightly different times and then they cancel so yeah that's three things oh another one that i would recommend uh is called isolate by TB Audio. Basically, I actually use Re, uh, Re X Comp by, it's a Reaper plugin in a bundle called Replugs, but it's Windows only. So I thought I should show you this as well. 
basically you can solo your lows, low mids, mids, high mids, and highs. And that's super handy for referencing where, for example, when I was learning to master stuff, I was listening to the high end or low end and finding out where the energy was. Sometimes you'd find the high mids were really, really loud or whatever the case may be. You can also listen for dynamics, like how, how much they're sort of pumping or if they're really squashed, all that sort of stuff will sort of teach you how your genre is mixed or mastered. And on that note, a lot of people put too much weight in mastering. And the fact is, Mastering isn't going to save a bad mix. So yeah, this is a useful plugin just for soloing these bands or muting a band. So you can go like telephone and hear what it might sound like in a crappy speaker system. You can also change the crossovers of each of these bands, which is useful. I don't fully know this plugin yet, but it does seem like a super useful thing to monitor and compare your references with. So this we can call monitor chain. And yeah, it goes after the master chain and has our reference track running through it. Hope you guys found that useful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.